Father, thank you for the provision of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the word that you have for us. Now, Lord, we open ourselves to all that you have for us and this word. We say yes to you, Lord. We say yes to all that you have for us. Now, come, Holy Spirit. Open our minds and our hearts in Jesus' name. And all God's children said together, Amen. Amen. And amen. Do you know Jesus wants to take you on new adventures? But first, he wants to release you and set you free so that you can come along for the journey. And Christ wants to use his church to accomplish his mission of setting people free. That as we have encountered the life-changing freedom of Christ, that we can set other people free as well. The story of Palm Sunday is the culmination of Jesus' earthly mission. It's the story of, of the culmination of Luke chapter 4, where Jesus had stood up in the sanctuary of the, the synagogue and had read those wonderful words that had been actually heard in Isaiah 61, but he quotes it again. And we know from Luke chapter 4, when Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery for, of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. When Jesus came, it was a heralding announcement that he had completed the work that the Father had called him to do. And it was moving into a new phase of his ministry. All that had been proclaimed, he had come, come healing, and he had come casting off the demonic, and he had come uh, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. And all this had been done. And now he is getting ready to, to move into that last final week. What a great and glorious week. And yet, here he is. You know, and there's a saying that, that goes something like this. What you can walk away from no longer controls you. Have you ever heard that before? What you can walk away from no longer controls you. Can you turn to your neighbor and say that? What you can walk away from no longer controls you. What does this passage have to do with Palm Sunday? Well, you see, Jesus told the disciples to loose the donkey so that he could use it for his purposes. Loose the donkey so he could use it for his purposes. And that's what I want to focus on. You know, in our opening prayer, Tracy had a wonderful prayer. And she prayed. She said, whatever, Lord, you, you want to free us from, so that we can encounter you this week. <coughs> Accomplish this, Lord. And we heard a wonderful children's message that spoke of the same thing. This is amazing how the Holy Spirit will work. We didn't coordinate all of these things, did we? But the Holy Spirit did. So we're going to talk about that idea that, the, that first the donkey needed to be loosed. You see, Jesus had a mission to complete. And part of that required that riding into Jerusalem must be accomplished, and he must do so on a donkey. Take a look at the passage. It's right in your bulletin. <coughs> we had a chance to hear it outside. Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Tell them the Lord needs it. And those who were sent ahead went and found it, just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? And they replied, the Lord needs it. Isn't that wonderful? The Lord needs it. 
You know the Lord needs you. The Lord has need of you. And the Lord can use you. And we don't know what that colt was tied to. Maybe it was a hitching post or a tree or a stable. We don't know. All we know is Jesus' command, untie it and bring it here. And many years ago, there were hitching posts just outside of these walls and where teams of horses were tethered. And you know, you know, can you imagine that as you go through this surrounding area? You've been to Williamsburg. Can you imagine that at one time in the surrounding area? It was perhaps not so long ago, a hundred or so years ago. People were still tethering horses. Can you imagine that? It's a fascinating thing when you think about it. And teams of horses. But it seems to me that the idea Jesus had about untying and loosing are just as real today. Not only four-footed critters, but two-legged ones as well. Mm. You see, he's still in the business of untying and setting people free. Do you remember Lazarus who was dead four days in the tomb, and what did he say? Loose him and set him free. Didn't he say that about Lazarus? Praise God. Somebody give him praise and thanks. And thanks for the Lord today. He's still in the business of setting people free. Do you remember what you were doing when Jesus, when you heard the voice of Jesus call your name and set you free? Maybe you can't remember that. Well, let me give you a little jar here. Let me jar your memory. Because maybe you were tied to something. Who knows? I know that there have been areas of my life that continue. Jesus continues to call me. And then sometimes I get hitched and tied up too. But you see, the focus of Jesus' ministry is this very concept. Doesn't it say that he, sent, he was sent to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of the sight of the blind, to proclaim to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Do you realize that this is the year of the Lord's favor? This is God's year of favor for you. Because of the cross, we walk in God's favor. What were you hitched to before Jesus sent for you and summoned you for kingdom purposes? Do you realize that this church has kingdom purposes? in store. Well, I thought I was just here to your journey. Do you realize this community is counting on this church fulfilling its destiny for kingdom's purposes? Maybe you were tethered to your iPhone. Maybe it was Fortnite. You were near that? So the kids are playing. Have you, you know what? I, I was walking, I was walking toward Harris Teeter. And I heard this guy, and he's walking along. And I happen to be walking along. He's walking toward Harris Teeter. And he's like, hi, how you doing? I'm like, good, how are you? Okay, good, good. I was just checking. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing good. I just keep walking. Okay, well, I was just checking to see, uh, were you able to talk to so-and-so about such-and-such? -such? You know, it wasn't long ago that people had random conversations with things out of nowhere. What do you think was happening? Yeah, he's having this conversation. He's having one conversation. I'm thinking he wants real conversations, and he's having a conversation with me. You ever do that? Does it just mean you feel stupid afterwards? <laughs> oh my gosh. People walking around, walking into cars, everything else. By the way, if you're doing that and you happen to be walking out the narthex, watch out for that little planter down there. It'll trip you up. It'll ruin your day. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> Are you tethered and tied up to your overscheduled lifestyle? 
mom, dad. Maybe you were even trying to get unhitched from the latest gadgetry. <coughs> you don't gotta have the latest gadget. Maybe it's the latest Yuppie Mobile. Maybe what you're hooked to is keeping up with keeping up. Maybe it's just to hang in there, climbing the ladder. Maybe it's trying to make the next grade, trying to make the next rank, just keeping hooked in. Jesus wants to set us free. Maybe your thing, maybe it's, who knows, maybe it's materialism that, that's got you hooked, that you're tethered to. There's a story about a guy, you know, was zooming down a mountain, he lost control of his Beamer, right? And just before his Beamer careened off the road, the guy jumped out and somehow his left arm was severed. And he's laying alongside the road and He's laying there and he's going, oh, my beamer, my beamer. And the rescuer says, buddy, you're worried about your beamer. Your left arm's been cut off and you got blood pouring out. He looks down and says, my Rolex too. <laughs> oh my God. You see how things get stuff. We can find ourselves so connected to stuff. <coughs> you know, it's easy for folks to see how they can get tethered or other folks can get tethered to addiction. <coughs> but what about the, 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 you know, being hitched, the hitching posts of remorse or regret? Or maybe it's the decisions you made years and years ago, but every day you wake up and there's that hitching post of shame. That still has you. Jesus is still calling and says, Loose him, loose her, and bring him to me. What about being hitched to resentment or feelings of anger or betrayal? I wonder if it's possible to be tied. To feelings like you never got a fair shake. Am I getting too close? Maybe you feel like you never got a fair shake from a teacher. Or maybe you didn't get a fair shake. Or God didn't treat you just quite right. Or you got passed over. Maybe you're hitched to your grief. Grief's a tough thing. And it's hard to release the ones we love. I know. See, hitching posts come in many shapes, sizes. You know, sometimes they come in shapes like political parties, even agendas that may even try to control and dominate and manipulate. Jesus doesn't want any of that. He comes that we may have life and have it more abundant. Yes. Is it possible? That even the folks who proclaim freedom to the captives can be just as bound? Is it possible that there are hitching posts outside of our building? But let's, let's, let's not discount the possibility that maybe we've moved inside. I wonder if there's hitching posts inside that we get tethered to. Oh, now be careful, preacher. Careful. Maybe getting, maybe getting a little too close for comfortable. Huh? You see, there's a good number of hitching posts that Christ wants to set us free from. Sometimes we can be tethered to the fear of man. Always trying to please. Well, what will so-and-so think? What about the hitching posts of old grievances? <coughs> we talked about 
uh, a number of things, another re number of reasons. Sometimes people leave churches. There's a scripture that talks about offense. Sometimes there are <coughs> offenses that folks take that need to be cleared up. And sometimes people just get offended because they get offended. They try and change their mind. Oh my goodness. Proverbs 18, 19 says, A brother offended is harder to win than a strong city. A content and contentions are like the bars of a castle. Have you ever met somebody you thought, they'll never change? The freedom, the power of the gospel is that no one, no one is beyond the life-changing power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we're going to keep preaching it. I'm going to keep preaching it. You want to be a part of that? Because that's the church that I want to be part of. Sometimes we have totems of tradition that we can be hitched to. Some folks can get hitched to the very building itself. But and when that happens, you don't really come here because you're fed spiritually. In fact, sometimes folks get married more to the building and to the furnishing, furnishings and where the pulpit happens to be and maybe even the color of the, the pyramids and if we get everything exactly right and, and all of the liturgicals and the rubrics and everything else and we get so bound up with that. Are you with me, church? And the problem is that the people who want to come and encounter Christ they just want to encounter Jesus. They want to encounter His mercy and His love and all the other stuff. It may have a lot of rich tradition and meaning for folks who have been around for a long time, but for folks who are hungry and starved for mercy and just need a word that sets them free. All the other stuff, as Luther would say, he had a great word for it. What was it? Somebody. Adia for it. That's what he called it. We can hold fast sometimes to all those things. And sometimes we hold on to our greatest fears. John Berg was getting ready with his family to leave Sweden. They had just heard that the unsinkable ship, the Titanic, had sunk. The family was mortified. He and his wife and a whole bunch of kids, they must have had six or seven kids, from the top, from the oldest to the youngest. But this great new land lay out there with all kinds of potentials called America. He was faced with the choice, should I stay in what I'm familiar, this, this land that I'm familiar with, and then this lifestyle that I know so well, or should I step out into the brave and into the unknown and risk, and even in the face of titanics, and sinkings and things like that, and even the risk of, of the, the, the First World War and so many dangers. Should I step out? Ultimately, they decided to take the risk. They heard that call to be untethered, to be set free, to brave it, to go forward into the unknown. That was my great grandfather, John Berg. And I don't know about you, but I'm pretty darn glad he did. How about you? Sometimes God calls us to rest. And that's the nature of faith. It calls us out. Christ wants to use his church to accomplish his mission. 
He wants us. He's still in that business because he's still calling us as disciples who have been set free. And he is called for it. And he's calling us to go and share the news, the good news that has the potential of setting others free. We're going to do something so amazing this week. And it's going to be the beginning of a whole bunch of opportunities that are coming. And you know what? You can have your high-powered evangelistic programs. Guess what we're going to do? We have been invited to go and partner with Chick-fil-A. Anybody go to Chick-fil-A? All right. This is the mission. How many of you heard that we're going to Chick-fil-A on Tuesday from 6 to 8? Do you know that there are all kinds of families that are going to Chick-fil-A? There is a, uh, there's an Easter egg hunt. Chick-fil-A specifically invited us of apostles to come and we're going to paint faces. And we have these great little book card, book, uh, bookmarks that simply say, God loves you, no strings attached, on one side. And it has a happy little face, face painting on one side, and on the other side, it says, from your friends at Apostles Lutheran Church, preschool and child care, and it has our phone number, and it has our website. There's no heavy-handed pressure or anything else. It's a chance to go minister to people. If we have a chance to pray with folks and they're open to it, great. If not, we'll just walk in the Spirit and see what God provides. It's a chance for us to go and minister. Do we need face painters? Yep, we'll take as many as we can get. We already have a couple of face painters signed up. You don't want to see me, a guy with shaky hands, doing this. It's kind of scary, okay? But we have some folks who are really good at that. And uh, you know what? What do you think about that? It's called servant evangelism. Get used to it. Because we're going to be doing this on a regular basis. And this is just the beginning. We're going to be showing up at company picnics. We're going to be down here in Locks Park for other events. Possibly Jubilee Day. All over the places. Some of you may be going, Ah, oh, you know what you're doing? You know where we're going? Blah, blah, blah. We're going to be doing it. <laughs> the word of the Lord came to me as I was walking out. He said, Let your nets down. Prepare for a catch. Let's pray. Loose them, Lord, and set them free. Your people, whether they're in this building or outside this building, so that we can love them with your love. With the very love that has, in, has encountered us in our hearts, transformed us. Thank you, Lord. We say yes to your yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please rise.